a son is born. You know, this is the time that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And in Isaiah chapter 9, it reads in verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. I think that's very important for us to remember as Christians, as believers, as the family of God, that the government is upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Praise the name of Jesus. He is ruling and he is reigning today as God's only begotten son. But you know, he was the first of many brethren. And as a person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they become one of God's sons. Let's turn over to Luke chapter 2 starting in verse 1. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman Empire. This was the first census that had taken place. So Joseph so everyone had to be registered. In verse 4 so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, the city of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was uh, pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You know, this is the story that we're familiar with. Many of us are, are very familiar with this passage of Scripture where Jesus is actually brought forth. The Son is brought forth. This message is all about bringing forth Jesus the Son of God that dwells on the inside of you. You know, it says in uh, Romans 8.14 that all those that are um, led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. It also says in, in verse 19, if we just go down a little ways in Romans 8, that the whole creation... The whole world is just groaning and expecting the manifestations of the sons of God. And this is the time for those sons to come forth. Just like Mary brought forth Jesus and laid him in the manger. He was a son. He was God's only begotten son. But we are sons of God. You know, it says that in 1 John 3, 1 and 2, um, how much love God has bestowed upon us that God has given unto us because to call us sons, to call us sons. You know, it says in Galatians 4, let's turn over there quickly. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, it says here that talking about the sons coming forth, let the Christ man, let the son that's in you come forth. You know, this, this Christmas is a time to recognize the birth of Jesus Christ, but it's also a time to allow that Christ man to, to come forth out of us. It says in uh, chapter 4, well, if we go back to chapter 3 and verse uh, 26, you are the sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you, who were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. 
And in verse 6 of 4, because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son, Jesus, into our hearts. And in, in the spirit calls out, Abba, Father, or Abba, Daddy, for you are no longer a slave, but a son. Oh, that is so exciting to me, that we are sons, and that we can manifest his glory in this earth. And that is, you know, glory in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. This is about the wise men who came to see Jesus. In, in chapter 2 of Matthew, it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi, or the wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? You know, there are many people today that are still looking for Jesus. They're still looking and saying and seeking, Is this the one? We know that Jesus Christ was born. He walked on this earth for 33 years. He died on the cross for all of mankind to save us from our sins, to heal our bodies, to bring redemption to the land. And we, we know that. And we know that he rose again on the third day after they crucified him. They, he rose again. And I do believe that. He is my Savior and my Redeemer. And these wise men, these magi, were looking for him. We want to worship him, they said. And in verse 3, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. He was troubled. And, and all of Ju Jerusalem with him, when he had uh, called together all of the chief uh, priests and teachers of the law, he said, where is this Christ supposed to be born? And in verse 5, they said, in Bethlehem of Judea. For this is what the prophet has written. In verse 7, Then Herod called the Magi, or the wise men, secretly and found out from uh, them the exact time that the star appeared. He sent to them Beth to, to go to Bethlehem. He says, Go and find this child so that I can go and worship him also. You know, the, the enemy wants to know where we are. And as long as, as we um, are wise in the things that we do and wise in what we say in, in this day and time, then the enemy will not find out where we are. As soon as they found him, report to me so that I can go and worship him. That's what Herod said. And, of course, he was lying. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and, and they followed the star. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they presented to him gifts. They presented gold and incense and myrrh and gold standing for deity, you know, that he was. Uh, God's only begotten son. He was royalty. You know, and that's who we are today. If you're in Christ Jesus, then you are a royal priesthood. And they, in, they gave him incense, and which is, uh, comes from oil. And they, they brought the myrrh. They brought the joy. Uh, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. You know, and I think this is so important right here that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, once a person knows Jesus and accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they go another way. They do not go back the way that they have come from. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it says that Jesus has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Praise the name of the Lord forever. You know, and it also says in James chapter 1, verse 5, that if any person lack wisdom, let them ask the Lord for that wisdom because he will give it generously. He will not find fault with us. 
but he will give that wisdom to us and it will just rise up in us and we will know how to deal wisely in the affairs of this life. Jesus, at this Christmas time, let him be your wisdom. And the shepherds were in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and they were afraid. And the angel, the very first thing the angel said to them was, Be not afraid. I'm in Luke chapter 2. And the angel had a message for them. The angel said, Be not afraid, because I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be to all people. You know, this is what the message of God is saying to us today. That He has come and He is bringing His peace and His joy and His love and His goodwill to all mankind. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, the shepherds were listening to this angel and all of a sudden there was a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God in the highest, and saying, Peace on earth, goodwill to men. You know, we need to be praising Him today. We need to be worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords, because no longer is He a babe in the manger, but He is the warring King. He is the one that we can depend on. He is the one that brings comfort and joy and peace to us in any situation. And if you have him on the inside of you and you've ac accepted him as Lord and Savior, then he becomes your king. He becomes the, the, the center of your very being. He becomes who you are. And so we just thank him today and we praise him today. In the book of Revelation chapter 19, it says the four and twenty elders are bowing down to the King of kings and Lord of lords and they're praising him and they're worshiping him and all of the heavenly hosts are praising him. Did you know that Jesus was always, he was the word. In, in John, St. John chapter 1 it says in the word, was with God and the Word was God and we know that as the Word Jesus laid down his glory and he came to earth as an individual as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes he walked on this earth he died on the cross he was resurrected by the Spirit of God and now he is at the right hand of the Father Praise the name of Jesus. And we can praise him today because he will come into any situation in your life and he will war for you. He will be your king in that situation. You know, and I just, I thank him today. I praise him for who he is. He is my king. He is my Lord. And we can praise him today because no longer is he in that manger but he is ruling and reigning in his body this day. Thank you for viewing.